As your child grows up, you may find them having tantrums or meltdowns more often. Hello, Dr. Chung. Hello, Professor Elvis. I hear you are an early childhood professional and an expert in child development. Now, I find children very adorable, but everything goes downhill when they get upset. Could you share with us why children have tantrums or meltdowns so easily? Sure. We find that some children get easily upset, for example, when they're not the first in line or when they need to wait for their turn for an activity or even when they do not get to play with their favourite toy. It can happen under any circumstance. The reason is because young children often find it difficult to express emotions and feelings like frustration, anxiety, anger or unhappiness in acceptable ways. When these feelings become big and strong, that's when children usually have meltdowns or tantrums. So it's not uncommon. As adults, we need to guide them and help them figure out how to express their emotions and feelings in acceptable ways. Yes, they do seem to get upset over very small matters. But you're saying we can help them. How do we do that? We can help children become more aware of their emotions and impulses and develop better control in managing their needs. We call this emotional self-regulation. For young children, self-regulation and emotional regulation are closely related. Self-regulation helps children manage their emotions, impulses, behaviour and speech according to the demands of the situation. Emotional self-regulation is the ability to modify their emotional reactions to the situation and delay negative reactions. Let me share with you about the zones of regulation. It is a framework we can use to foster self-regulation and emotional control in young children. You can do this by categorizing feelings into four zones. The zones can also be compared to traffic lights. For example, when you see your child yelling or turning aggressive, that belongs to the red zone, and you should ask them to stop. If they're acting nervous, surprised, or even being silly, that belongs in the yellow zone, and you should ask them to slow down to prevent their emotions from escalating. When they portray positive emotions like excitement, feeling calm or proud, that belongs in the green zone and you should encourage them to go on. But if they're feeling down, hurt or tired, that belongs in the blue zone and you should ask them to rest. So red for stop, yellow for slow down, green for go and blue is the resting area. That's right. Well, it sounds very easy. But when they are angry, how do we get them to stop? Won't it aggravate them even more? Parents themselves have to be mindful of how they respond to their children's meltdowns and tantrums. Children learn to develop emotional self-regulation through warm and responsive relationships and from behaviours modelled by the important adults in their lives. Being dismissive, amused, impatient, irritated, angry or giving mini-lectures are all unhelpful responses. Instead, when parents regulate their own emotions by speaking slowly, softly, calmly and in a low tone, and focusing on key words, children imitate these behaviours and are more likely to regain equilibrium faster. And after the children have calmed down, what should parents do next? When children have calmed down after a meltdown or tantrum, parents can talk to them patiently and help them to identify their feelings. Ask them what they think caused such feelings and how they could have reacted in an acceptable manner. Write down the children's ideas 
and refer to these ideas when reminding them to exercise self-control. We have to remember that every child is different. Different children respond to different strategies for calming down. For some, deep breathing or squeezing a soft toy is helpful. For others, they may need time and space to calm down or even having a reassuring hug. We have talked a lot about how to deal with their meltdowns or tantrums. Is there any way to avoid them in the first place? Parents can recognize early signs leading to meltdowns or tantrums and act to diffuse the situation from escalating. This can be done by being observant and anticipating children's needs or by distracting them temporarily so that they focus on something else. Parents can also read books with stories that highlight a variety of scenarios and invite children to think of ideas and ways to regulate themselves if they were in those situations. How will emotional self-regulation benefit our children? Children who are able to regulate their emotions and behaviour are better able to engage others and respond to the varying activities of the day. Having emotional self-regulation skills is empowering and will also help children to have a goal or desired outcome. They will feel happier or have others understand their needs better. This is critical to strengthening young children's mental and emotional well-being. Those were very helpful tips you have shared with us today, Dr Chung. You're most welcome, Professor Elvis. So parents, use the zones of regulation to help your children become more aware of their emotions and impulses and have better control in managing their needs. Be mindful of how you respond to your children's meltdowns and tantrums. Negative responses are not helpful. Instead, Regulate your own emotions by speaking slowly, softly, calmly, in a low tone and focusing on key words. That way, your children are more likely to regain equilibrium faster. Children who are able to regulate their emotions and behaviour are better able to engage with others and respond to the varying activities of the day. This is critical to children's mental and emotional well-being. Now that we have heard from the expert, let's try some activities that promote focus and self-regulation. Practicing to concentrate and focus can help children engage in learning, be more observant, problem-solve, complete tasks, achieve goals, and so much more. Here's a fun activity to increase your child's concentration and focus. How about another activity to increase concentration and focus which involves rhythm. Now here's an activity, while challenging, can further strengthen your child's ability to listen carefully and focus. Calm our children down, here's a useful activity. We have learnt from Dr. Chu in the previous segment that talking to our children is important. This activity will allow both parent and child to understand each other's emotions better. Parents can model and help children 
find appropriate responses and behaviors for a range of situations. It is also important for parents to acknowledge and validate their children's feelings. Aside from hands-on activities, there are books that you can use to teach your child about regulating emotions and feelings. Next up, we have Sadida from the National Library Board. She will share with us a book on how to regulate emotions and feelings, as well as tips for reading with your child. Thanks, Professor Elvis. Hi, I'm Sadida. All of us have times when we wake up from the wrong side of the bed or have things happen to us that ruin our day. George's Best Bad Day by Ruth Chan shows children that they are not the only ones to experience bad days and that is perfectly normal. It inspires children to be proactive in finding ways to cheer themselves up. Sometimes, plans may not necessarily work but something nice could happen unexpectedly and that gives meaning to having a best bad day. With a bit of fun and friendship, bad moods will be gone in no time. Before you dive into Georgie's best bad day, you could ask your child what they think makes a bad day and at the end of the book, what they think could make a bad day better. Maybe you could do those activities with them. Describe what you are doing using as many different words as possible. It will help your child to pick up new words and expand the vocabulary. To get more fun out of reading, read aloud with your child. You could also act out the story together using makeshift characters out of objects you can find at home. For example, making puppets using socks, spoons or cardboard. Having conversations help children learn about language and communication. Tune in by paying attention to what your child is communicating to you. Talk more with your child using descriptive words and encourage them to describe what they see. Take turns by encouraging your child to respond to your words and actions. To help your child learn new words, you can create a print-rich environment by labeling objects around the house. Every time you use them, point to the word and say it clearly. Draw attention to words on things such as cereal boxes, bottles, magazines, and newspapers. And these are some tips for reading and a book recommendation that teaches children about regulating emotions and feelings. Check out the NLB mobile app to search for more books for your child. Wow, that was very informative. Did you get all the tips from the librarian? That's all for today's episode. I have definitely learned more about children having meltdowns and how to deal with them. Check out these links if you would like to find out more.